Good morning, everyone. We're going to get started in just a few moments. We just want to give a few minutes for other participants to join us. But welcome this morning. Okay, we're going to get going here this morning. I just wanted to welcome everyone uh, and say thank you for joining us. Uh, this is a town hall specific, specifically geared uh, to the Atlanta market. So we're very excited um, to be doing this. Uh, plan companies have been doing informative town halls every Thursday at two o'clock, and and it's we've we've set out to be a resource for a lot of folks, but. What we realize is that uh, some of our markets have specific needs and, and specific topics that are important to them. Uh, that's certainly no different in the Atlanta and the Georgia market where we're seeing, uh, if you follow the news as recent as yesterday, there are different changes and, and different things happening specifically to the Georgia market. So we're very proud to be uh, conducting business in Georgia. We're very excited to be in the Atlanta market uh, so we hope today's presentation will help and, and we'll, we'll be able to answer some of your questions, especially around staffing, uh, janitorial and, and security front desk, which is what planned does. So today, how this works is it's primarily driven by your questions. Uh, if you look at the bottom of your screen or uh, you should see a button for Q and A, that's where you're able to ask uh, the panelists today, uh, who I will introduce in a few moments here. Uh, any questions that you'd like answered around the topics that we're covering today. Um, so we'll be here for as long as you need us to this morning. We set aside a half hour for the presentation. Our presentation should not take any longer than, than 15 minutes or so uh, once we get started here. And then the rest is around you. Um, so let's get started. So if we could do the next slide. So quickly, uh, my name is Dino Giuliano, and I'm the Chief Revenue Officer for Plan Companies. Uh, we are uh, headquartered in New Jersey. We're in 14 states. Um, I've been with Plan now uh, for 17 years. My background uh, is in law enforcement. I was a Marine. I was a police officer. I was a bodyguard. And the last 17 years have been uh, primarily in the operations division of Plan until about three years ago when I moved into uh, the role that I'm currently in now, uh, which is business development and, and growing the new markets, which was Atlanta just a couple of years ago. So uh, I'm gonna turn it over to someone, a familiar face to you all in Atlanta. JJ, are you there? Yes, I am. Good morning. Can you hear me? I can hear you great. Perfect. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Uh, Again, my name is Juan Jose Chavez. I'm the VP of Sales and Operations for plant companies in the South Division. Thank you again for participating in this event. I hope that you will find the information useful and applicable. Uh, I've been with the company for about nine years now. And before that, I was actually in the property management uh, industry uh, for about seven years. And before that, I was in the hospitality business for about 10 years. Uh, very excited to put this together, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. And I, you know, thank you for for the opportunity. So we can go uh, really quick because I know we want to be respectful of your time, and time is of the essence. Uh, if I can please have the next slide. So this is what we're gonna cover uh, during our conversation today. It's very important for us to uh, talk a little bit about it specifically about the. Georgia landscape, the COVID-19 landscape. Uh, obviously, 
a couple of recommendations for the janitorial program uh, during this pandemic, during these unprecedented times. And uh, Dino will uh, provide some light and guidance regarding some security uh, you know, details or situations for us to consider uh, during this uh, pandemic. Obviously, again, just like Dino said, you know, this uh, material is for you. You are, you know, driving uh, the information and we would like to give you the opportunity to ask questions uh, at the end. So those are kind of the four different steps that we're going to be covering. If we could get the next slide, please. Uh, that would be great. If I may, just JJ, I just want to add some something to what you just mentioned. Uh, you don't have to wait till the end to put your questions in. Um, so feel free throughout the entire presentation to click on that Q and A button uh, and and put in your questions if you have them. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, Dino. Uh, so let's learn a little bit about you know what's going on in Georgia right now. Uh, there's a lot of news out there on a national level, on a local level. So I think it is important to start this presentation talking about what's going on in Georgia. So obviously, uh, unprecedented times, unemployment claims in Georgia, uh, they're a little bit north of a million uh, uh, claims right now of people uh, that have lost their jobs that they have been furloughed. Uh, in terms of cases, we're talking about uh, over 19,000, and in terms of deaths, uh, a little bit over 700, almost 800 deaths in the state of Georgia. If we compare that to what's going on on a national level, uh, latest news is about over 22 million unemployment, unemployment claims, uh, over you know 800,000 uh, cases of COVID-19 in the U.S. and uh, almost 40 you know 3,000 deaths. So in Georgia, definitely has been affected. Uh, it is something that we are continue to uh, keep track of it. Uh, on our operations, we are assisting our partners in helping the best way uh, as possible in dealing with these situations. And it's something that uh, I think that at the end of the day, it is how we are adding value to our customers. Um, next slide, please. Let's talk a little bit about uh, what's going on in the Atlanta market as it relates to the property management condo association situations. I think that this, these are uh, important data. So uh, for the month of uh, April, 78% of renters pay the rent on time here in Georgia. Uh, that's actually a little bit better uh, than national level, but it's almost a 15% drop uh, from the same month last year. So in 2019 for April, uh, it, it performed 15% better than they did it this year. And I think this is important as we track, again, our partners and people, uh, apartment management companies, the ability to receive revenue. Uh, Nashville uh, actually performed pretty much the same as Atlanta. Uh, and Charlotte and Raleigh, actually, they did better. Uh, in a little bit only 8% uh, 8, 8 drop from the same month uh, previous year, right? Uh, on a national level, this is something interesting. 68% was the national average for April. In other words, Georgia actually performed 10 points better than the national level. Uh, they expect these numbers to actually uh, continue to decline as it's uh, for May. Uh, and as you know, uh, as of yesterday, just like Dino said, uh, Governor Kemp actually uh, lift the uh, uh, order for you know stay home and order some uh, a special type of business to be open by Friday. Barber shops, restaurants, movie theaters and all that. And I think that this is something to consider. Uh, the same thing as continuing the social distancing. So I think that we are waiting a little bit more specific information about that. Uh, because uh, I think that that's going to be really important how these businesses are really going to operate and can they operate as it relates to these new guidelines that the governor is going to set in place. Um, also, as you might know, the Atlanta mayor is putting together an advisory council to really uh, figure it out really specifically how is that going to look for the city of Atlanta. So. All these are kind of brand new news and it's something that we are continuing to monitor 
and assisting our partners in getting ready for them to open. There is no doubt that sooner or later, most of those businesses are gonna be opening and it's something that we will work together with our partners on that. So that's a little bit about uh, the landscape itself as it relates to the COVID-19 in the Atlanta area. If we could have uh, the next slide, please. Okay, so let's get right into it. The, the meat and bones of, of this presentation, right? So uh, let's talk a little bit about adjustments. And these are things that I think that uh, what we're gonna cover, it doesn't matter if you have your janitorial program in-house or if you outsource it to the vendor. I think that we wanna be very mindful of the information that we're sharing and really uh, be applicable to all of you, right? So. The first thing that I think is important to, to talk about is to uh, continue to have an open line of communication with your janitorial team. And specifically, uh, this is not a one-way street, right? So uh, each property manager or condominium manager or manager in the building uh, should take into consideration that the janitorial staff is part of the team. Every day, there should be a 15, 10 minute meeting that, is, that talks a little bit about what's going on in the building. Uh, I think that is important for the janitorial team to set up a main point of contact. And because of that, uh, have that open channel of communication. That uh, janitorial supervisor perhaps uh, should be the person uh, communicating to the property manager if somebody is sick on the janitorial team how they're doing with supplies, how they're doing in the inventory uh, of those supplies. I think that those are uh, very important. Um, again, so that point of contact will be uh, important. Uh, one thing that just happened, and I think it's important to bring it up, uh, specifically here in the, mar in the Atlanta market, is that uh, the Marta has actually suspended several lines of uh, bus lines. Uh, the metro has been actually decreased on service and the bus the buses uh there are not a lot of buses now that are running and this is important during these meetings morning meetings to we in the full staff is very very important it doesn't matter if you're doing it in-house or if you have a vendor doing that i think that that is something uh, very important. Obviously, uh, if you have a vendor that is providing these services, there has to be a solid plan that is, discover that is covering how to clean the building, what is the frequency of cleaning the high touch areas, as well as any staff staffing coverage needs. For example, something that we're doing with our partners is that we put a, a plan together in the event that if somebody's not able to get to the building, are we providing coverage? Who's that person in charge? Is the person that is going to cover knows your building? Or is that person that is just gonna get there and doesn't even know where the janitorial closet is at? So it's very important to continue to work with your vendor in having all those plan Bs, plan Cs in place. Because I think at the end of the day, like I said, it's about how we add in value. It's very important nowadays to have people cleaning your buildings. It's very important to identify which ones are the specific areas that we need to increase the frequency of cleaning in your building. And I think that for that, it's very important to be prepared on that. If you can please go to the next slide. Alrighty, thank you. So, Another thing that is, uh, we consider very important for us is the proper training of the chemistries and uh, personal protecting equipment, especially in tools. One thing that I want to bring up during this time is it's very important that granted, if there is a janitorial team in your building, we need to make sure that everybody embraces that janitorial team. And if you have a front desk, if you have a leasing team, everybody should go through this training. It is very important for us to make sure that how to use the products, how to use the equipment, how to put on the right way, the mask, the glasses, the gloves and all that. Because I think that 
details like that are the ones that could be the difference between having a case in your building or having one of your team members uh, affected by uh, COVID-19. Uh, this is, a, there's a lot of new information that comes in. I think that COVID-19 is something that even that Center for Disease Control are still uh, providing updates on a daily basis. So definitely, I highly recommend staying in touch, visit it maybe on a daily basis, the uh, CDC website. I think that that is something important. Uh, every day we hear new information from how long the virus stays on surfaces to, uh, you know, uh, we're supposed to wear a mask. Is it mandatory to wear a mask or no? Uh, obviously, this situation is unprecedented. I think that it's very important to now more than ever show the appreciation to, you know, the janitorial team. I think that they're providing a, a essential service to your building and they're very important. They're playing a very important role in how this situation plays out in your particular buildings. Um, Another thing that uh, really quick to start landing up on this is that uh, it's, it's important to consider the killing time on the agents that you're using. So for in what that means basically is how long the chemistry needs to be on the surface. We will not be doing a good job if we're using a chemistry on a surface, let's say for example, the elevator panels or the elevator buttons, and we are immediately removing that chemistry. Some products, they have different killing times. It is very important for you to work with your janitorial provider to understand that and are they doing it a good, in, a, in a good and effective way. Uh, some chemistries requires a minute for, you know, to kill the virus. Some chemistries you know, requires five minutes on it. So I think it's something very important just uh, to, to consider. Uh, obviously, this is the time to make sure that we have enough mops, enough microfiber cloths. It is important to understand your overall janitorial program. Y your janitorial provider should have something in writing and it need be set up a meeting with them to make sure that every single aspect, for you to know that every single aspect has been um, covered. Um, again, to clean the building, we need you know, associates, we need people. Uh, some they providing that in our system that we're doing again is that we have people ready to be dispatched to the buildings in case some of the on-site associates are not able to make it to work. Uh, it is important for those floating, we call them, to be familiar with your building uh, as well so they can, they can be effective once they get to the building. Uh, lastly, uh, signage, I think, is playing a very important role, right? So we all know about washing hands, uh, disinfecting and all that, and I think that is something that some of our partners are doing a great job at it, reminding the residents, reminding the people that live in those buildings, and put visible signage in areas where residents go in, from the entrance of the building, inside the elevators, and I think that uh, there's an educational role that we can all play during this, uh, during this, uh, you know, time. So I, I think that I hope that, you know, that that helped a lot. Again, some of it, uh, some of you probably already doing, some of those could be easily implemented, and at the end of the day is really how we can add value um, to you and your guests and your residents as well, and indirectly to your families too, because if we are providing a clean building, uh, that affects so many different uh, levels of, you know, of, of the life. So with that being said, again, thank you. And Dino, uh, I'll pass it on to you to go over security. Thank you very much, JJ, and terrific job and some very valuable information there. And uh, hopefully that will spark uh, some questions for our audience and certainly uh, very valuable. During these times, I think a lot of folks are focused on what JJ just covered with you, um, the cleanliness of your buildings, the importance of not getting people sick. But I think what we find and what we have found during times like this, that security becomes front of mind as well, or should at least become front of mind. Crime tends to spike when people are out there and, and their jobs are in jeopardy. 
or uh, it affects their income. Uh, people are having to make tough decisions like JJ talked about earlier when he talked about specifically in Atlanta, the amount of folks who have lost their jobs. And, you know, this causes a lot of frustration. It causes tempers to rise. Uh, and of course, people go into survival mode and, and the way people choose to survive sometimes can be uh, looking to the crime side, the wrong side of how to do things. Um, so it's important that while you remember the importance of keeping your, your buildings clean, you also wanna make sure that you keep your buildings safe. As JJ mentioned earlier, your staff, you know, planned, uh, our primary function is providing staff for buildings. Um, so we have 4,500 employees in 14 states. And in most buildings, we are the primary source of staff for the buildings that we service. Keeping our folks safe uh, and able to go to work has been critical, not only for us, but for the clients we serve. So it's, it's imperative that you take all the methods possible to ensure that your staff is safe. What does that mean for your front desk and security teams? Well, the il illustration in front of you here, I give some examples of some barriers. Uh, our local supermarkets, and I'm sure all over Atlanta, they're putting barriers between cashiers uh, and, and people who are shopping to keep them safe. It should be no different for your front desk staff. Uh, keeping a, a safe, we put some pretty neat illustrations of some creative things that some folks are doing here. Uh, the plastic that you would see uh, in front of a drummer, uh, perhaps, or, or the little plastic shield over the uh, desk that you're seeing here are just a couple of great simple examples uh, to keep some distance between your front desk staff and residents. You know, when we weren't in, in a COVID-19 situation, your lobbies uh, were very active. The front desk is the center point of your building. Uh, these are typically where people go for everything, for answering questions, what's happening. Um, they're friends. They are the ambassadors of your property in most cases, your front desk staff. People are used to going to them. People are used to talking to them. And for a lot of residents and a lot of buildings, um, and they miss that interaction. This is a good time, and JJ also talked about communication. Encourage residents not to come down and hang out and linger, and linger in your lobbies. Um, you want to keep the staff safe. Uh, having to replace staff um, with new staff, it, it, it removes the familiarity that your residents have with the building. And it could also lead to people who are not as familiar with your residents who will have to fill in for these roles. Uh, as I mentioned, 4,600 employees in the States, you know, we, we've done a good job in, in keeping them sheltered. Uh, but as you can see with this pandemic, we're in an unprecedented area here. So, you know, not always have we been able to do that. So you need to make sure that you work along with us and keeping those barriers uh, safe and, and making sure that our staff can come to work safely. Not only our staff, but your staff as well. well locking down doors that were previously left open, here, now's the time when we want to control uh, egress and ingress to your building. It's important that we know who's coming in, what they're there to do, how long they're going to be in the building, you know, with the certain lockdown protocols that your governor has put in place in Georgia, uh, the screening process is critical to make sure that we're only allowing people in that are considered essential to the building and the essential workers to the property. So having um, that safety and security, you don't want to have people entering areas of the building without your staff knowing about it. So having those other doors locked down, uh, having the areas secured, having someone watching cameras, more important than ever. Locking down and securing your supplies. Uh, when this pandemic first took off, uh, it, it was almost comical how important toilet paper became, how important uh, some common cleaning agents became. Uh, they were almost like gold when this first struck. Um, your buildings have these supplies that maybe perhaps you weren't thinking you needed to lock down your 
toilet paper. You weren't thinking about locking down some of these supplies, but now they are critical to your operation and to the staff who's cleaning your building. You don't want those to disappear. Securing amenities. This is one that I was quite surprised about, you know, and, and a lot of buildings, uh, they closed down their amenities uh, during this time. It was just not good for people uh, to, to linger and, and hang out in areas. Gyms were closed, theaters were closed in buildings, um, certainly pools and, and barbecue areas. Um, having those areas closed down, it's important that you have someone keeping an eye on it. As the weather started getting nicer in our areas, we saw more and more people breaching the protocol and, and unsecuring the amenities all on their own. Uh, so it's important that if you lock down, first of all, anything you lock down, make sure you communicate to the residents. Make sure they know that these areas are indeed closed um, and that we'll be watching. And perhaps what will happen if they don't pay attention or perhaps explaining to them how that could affect fellow residents safety and security by, by not following the protocols. But we have seen some folks try to open up barbecue areas when the weather got nice. Um, some folks trying to open up other areas and people are getting bored. And as people are getting bored and time goes on, uh, they feel they're entitled to these areas and these amenities. Um, so keeping a close uh, lockdown on those areas is going to be very vital and important uh, that we follow through and follow up on that. So that concludes my presentation, except there's something that I wanted to add. It's actually one of our questions um, in the Q&A section here uh, that I'll handle now since I'm uh, on a roll here. Uh, packages. Um, how, people are curious how to handle packages during these troubling times. And, and packages have, have gone up for front desk staff. People at home, they're ordering, they're getting a lot of their supplies at home through Amazon and other means. So packages are, are on a rise, similar to what you would see during the holidays. The difference is now the packages uh, need to be safe and secure, and that interaction from your front desk staff and the resident over a package is something that obviously at the, during these times you want to you want to minimize uh, or eliminate completely if you can. Some of the ways that folks have done this is by having a, um, a separate individual, perhaps an additional security person or another person on your staff actually deliver the packages up to the units. Um, one of the processes that I've seen for that is just call ahead, Mr. Jones, I have your package here. I'm going to leave it at your front door. I'm going to knock and just let us know. We're going to walk away. Let us know that you received it. Thank you. Other buildings are taking it another level. Um, there have been a lot of uh, questions and concerns. How long do contaminants last on surfaces? I've heard everything from 24 hours to three days to six months. People are claiming they have the miracle cure, that if they spray these foggers on areas that there's, it's safe. The honest truth is no one knows what to believe these days. What, what some folks are doing is holding packages downstairs for three days. Um, some areas are even um, amenities that have been secured before, your gym, uh, other areas, they're using them as, as package rooms now, and they're setting them up in, in days. So your Monday packages that get dropped off on Monday will sit in the room for three days. Those packages will get delivered up to the units uh, on Thursday. And then that room is disinfected and clean and ready for the next day of packages. Those are some of the ideas, some of the things I've heard that buildings are doing. But certainly packages not only are on the rise, but are of huge concern. Um, to residents, either rightfully or unrightfully so, but there should, could be, would be a plan uh, for your properties, and we certainly would like to be able to help you in any way we can. So that handles packages. Can we uh, go to the next slide, please? So I'm going to turn it back over uh, to JJ, who has uh, been doing a fantastic job in Atlanta, and he's going to tell you what people are saying about us. Yeah, I think it is important, you know, to to memorize something of, you know, some of the testimonials that we have received from our customers, you know, 
Uh, the first one, uh, actually, one of our customers uh, requested temporary help uh, in a very short notice that they, be, uh, some of their staff were not feeling well, so they, they had to go home. And uh, we sent a, an associate there, and obviously you can see something that uh, uh, they appreciated. Uh, we had another customer that there was a possible uh, COVID-19 case in the office between the admin staff. Fortunately, that came out negative, but we went there and provided, uh, you know, deep cleaning and uh, sanitizing and disinfecting to that office. So that was that was great. And on the front desk side, you know, uh, if you are outsourcing that to another provider too, I think it is important to make sure that uh, those associates are uh, provided with masks, gloves, uh, and I think that that is something that our associates. Uh, in our customers, um, you know, really, really appreciate it. Uh, I wanted to go back to one thing that you were talking, Dino, about the security. I think something that we're noticing here in the Atlanta market is that some of our customers, most of our customers are considering those uh, courtesy patrol services that we offer uh, in a way as a visual deterrent to any potential, you know, crime. So that is something that uh, we are noticing in this market. I think it is important as unemployment claims rise, and you were saying uh, it's something that we are providing as well, uh, entrance of the garage or having a mobile patrol officer walking at specific sites of the building. And I think the, uh, one of the important things to consider here is that every building is different. What could be working for the building across the street from yours, perhaps that's not a good approach for your building. What could be working for your building cannot be the same uh, approach that you know another building uh, in Atlanta could be working. And I think that that's where we are providing that value on making those assessments and suggesting uh, ways to really how to be a visual deterrent to any potential crime, you know. That's a great point, JJ, in fact, uh, ironically, we have these signs all over my town here that say parks are closed, lock your cars. So what's happening is cars, theft, and break-ins and break of vehicles are on the rise during this time. So a lot of cars are just being left outside and people aren't driving them. Uh, they're becoming vulnerable. So I think that, that the current that you're talking about could help prevent that. And I know a lot of people are certainly considering those courtesy patrols at this time to keep an eye on things. You know, there's some areas that are locked up, uh, whether it's your pool, whether it's uh, a, a back, uh, maybe you have a, a gym for the kids in the back, or you, you definitely want to increase uh, patrols and you certainly want to make sure that uh, you're keeping a vigilant eye on secure areas. So yeah, no, for sure. I appreciate that. Uh, JJ, if this is our last slide, can you advance the slide, please? Yeah, I think that the last the last slide uh, we'll cover. It, it was very important for us to provide, you know, our uh, attendees uh, some links for resources. Uh, number one, definitely, I think that Plan has done a really good job updating our website and creating an, a specific landing page with everything related to COVID-19, and this is available to you know everyone. I think that uh, that's definitely a great resource. Uh, if you need anything else, there's our email as well. Uh, as it relates to Georgia, there are some, uh, you know, websites, there are links. Um, something that I'm a great fan, and this is not a plug or anything, but uh, the Atlanta Business Journal, I think, is a great resource as it relates to overall business, uh, you know, uh, health in the state of Georgia, some uh, good information that you can get out of there. And is it, as it relates to job opportunities, there's a slide, uh, a link there, as well as some information about, uh, you know, schools that could be apply, applicable to uh, your buildings as well. Fantastic, JJ. So we're gonna leave that screen up while we go through some of your questions. And actually, uh, I'm gonna start with a comment and then I see there's quite a bit uh, out here for you, JJ. So stand by. Uh, All right, so, let's go. <laughs> so the first comment uh, that someone made here was, we aren't accepting packages at this time. The couriers can deliver them to the apartments. Sure. I think if, if you're able to do that, fantastic. Uh, in a lot of high rises, uh, certainly you're not able to do that. So depending on if you're a low rise, a mid rise or a high rise, 
uh, come up with a system or a program for packages that works best for you. So uh, in most high rises, uh, they're not able to deliver packages directly to the unit, which means that the front desk would have to accept and all the things I talked about earlier would apply. So I'm going yeah, and, to... And regarding that, Dino, I think also, yep. you know, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, we can definitely uh, go and, and check out, you know, do a property visit, check out something and, and provide a little bit more specific uh, insight or recommendations to, you know, to the building. Right. Fantastic. Yes. Um, JJ, are you ready? I have one for you. Is, uh, is bleach an effective cleaning agent for COVID-19? That's a great question. So the answer, the short answer is yes, but there are two things that everybody needs to be uh, aware of. Number one, that bleach, if it's a household bleach that you bought at Target, Publix, whatever, you need to make sure that it's not expired. So that's one. And number two, that dilution ratio is going to be key for this. And that is specifically is a third of a cup for each uh, gallon of water. Uh, and this is a great question. And it is something that if that dilution is not being uh, correct, uh, there is a chance that the associate can get sick uh, out of it. And also, uh, there could be a chance that you could be damaging the surface where you are applying the solution. So yes, just make sure that it's not expired and that you're using the right uh, dilution. Uh, really quick before we get to the other thing, I think it, the other question, you know, I think it is important to understand this. The chance of getting infected from COVID-19 by touching something that a surface that is infected or a package that is infected it is lower than if you don't wash your hands or that if you don't practice social distancing. So I think the key here really is make sure that you're washing your hands and make sure that you are applying the social distancing guidelines. And that's where when you were showing the pictures of the lobbies and, and all that, that's what is going to be very, very important. For example, you know, plant companies, we have over a hundred associates now in the state of Georgia and none of them has been infected with the disease. And I think that that's a true testament of the training, of really providing that support, right? Uh, because we are working in buildings where there actually has been confirmed. Uh, in personal, we have provided that uh, by the prop, uh, personal protective equipment, washing the hands and all that. So I think that that is something uh, very, very important. And of course, using the right chemistry with the right dilution. Thank you, JJ. That's very, very good uh, feedback. And I'm happy. I was not even aware um, that no one, none of our associates in, in, your, in that market there were infected. That's, that's fantastic. And a true testament of your leadership in that area. So appreciate the color on the question and, and the comments. Um, I'm going to move on. Um, time, we're a little past our time here. So I want to move a little, a little quicker here. How should we talk to our residents? Should we decide to add security to our building? I think it's important. I think there's a lot of people on edge right now. There are a lot of people uh, concerned. I think if, if you do add security, uh, I think you want to explain to them uh, the reasons behind it. Not because of a uh, situation or not because we want to add, have fear in the building around the current situation, but more uh, to be the eyes and ears of the building, to protect them, uh, to make sure that we're safe, uh, to monitor areas that you didn't have to monitor before. Um, when, when your building was open and, and areas didn't have to be secured, you may not have needed someone roving around the property. Uh, when cars are being used, when there was more traffic in the garage, uh, you may not have needed more eyes. Uh, these are ways that I, I would explain if you do decide to add staff be it security or be it whomever, front desk, anyone can be a good deterrent to your property and, and can watch. I would, uh, I would err towards the side of making sure people understand that this is not as a result of, of a harsh situation. So that is that. I answered that. I think, was that all? That, yeah. I think we have... Uh, 
answered yeah, all they, the questions. I, I think I think there was a couple of questions, you know, there. I'm sorry that I just uh, that I just click. And one is uh, uh, is disinfecting a what a, a one time event, or does it have to be done multiple times? So um, I think number one is very important to understand disinfecting and what that is. So disinfecting, uh, by definition, is the killing or removal of all germs from a surface. So can it be done a one-time event? Yes, as long as there is no other contact within that surface. Uh, so it really depends on what exactly what surface are we talking. For example, uh, as a standard for us, we are increasing the cadence of disinfecting frequently touched areas, door knobs, light switches, elevator buttons. But knowing that we could disinfect one area, and if two minutes after that, somebody that is infected touches it, that virus now is in that surface. So it really depends what a specific surface we're talking about. And again, you could touch an infected area, but that doesn't mean that you're gonna get the virus. If you don't wash your hands and you put your fingers in your mouth or touch your face or whatever, then you are going to get it, right? So it really depends on the uh, specific surface that we are uh, referring to. It could be a one-time thing, as long as you provide a controllable uh, you know, space and nobody's gonna walk in into that space, then that is, uh, that is, that is fine. Um, I think uh, another question that we had there is what safety precautions do you use for your staff cleaning a property? A property. So uh, we take a two-prong approach. Number one is the correct training. Uh, nobody goes into one of our buildings without the right training. And number two is providing the PPE, that is the personal protective equipment, uh, specifically gloves, uh, and masks, and it's something that we are providing. So that's that's what we are uh, providing to our staff, and it's, it has been proven to be uh, very effective. Uh, and lastly, let's see, I have one that it says, what can we do to ensure that replacement staff is as acclimated with our property as the original staff? I think that the key here is the preparation, and really, uh, we are not waiting for uh, somebody to call off sick to send somebody. So we have been able to have uh, three, four different staff members on call and those people are familiar already with the building because they had built for. They work at that building or they have cover vacations at that building. So I think that uh, those four, uh, you know, floaters that we have, uh, they, that's, that's how we are taking it. And in the event that they have to be dispatched to a building that they haven't been there, that's where the uh, resources coming into place because then we will send somebody that is familiar with the building and provide that guidance. So I think that that's how we are uh, approaching that and it, it has been, again, uh, effective. Dino, you know, and I think that those are the questions that I have so far on my end. Fantastic. Uh, thank you, JJ, great job today. Georgia, thank you, Atlanta, for coming out today. We truly appreciate you participating. Uh, what we want to point out, a couple things. Uh, one, every Thursday at 2 o'clock, uh, Plan does a town hall. And this town hall, we have several vendors. We have attorneys. We have fitness folks. Um, they're on, on hand for you to ask, answer, ask a wide variety of questions about what you may have. Uh, we encourage you to, to come out. Uh, the contact is right on your screen right now, which we will leave up after this presentation. But if you go to the plant company's COVID-19 website, uh, you can join there. You just got to join once and you'll become part of our VIP family and you'll be allowed uh, or entitled to come into this every single Thursday at two o'clock. Uh, so we hope to see you there. For you specifically, Atlanta, we'd love to keep this going. Uh, when you leave today, when you leave the meeting, you'll, you'll, have, uh, you'll be able to give us some feedback. Uh, in there, we encourage you to tell us what you'd like to see next. We'd like to encourage you to bring other, uh, some of your colleagues, some other folks that could benefit from this, from this uh, get-together here. We'll absolutely be doing it again. Most importantly, as we sign off, please stay, stay, stay safe. Um, we appreciate those of you who, are, who support us. Uh, through these difficult times, 
and we hope to continue to bring you valuable information uh, for you and your associates. So thank you so much. Again, thank you, JJ. Uh, please remember to fill out the short questionnaire on your way out. I'm going to leave the screen up uh, for a couple moments here. So if you're copying some information down, uh, we'll give you some time to do that. JJ and I are going to shut off our cameras here and, and uh, quiet out, and, uh, and we'll wait for a few minutes to do that. We'll see you again soon. Thank you, Atlanta. Thank you, everyone.